Hello, my name is Gianfranco Moreno uh, from the EFW team, and I'm going to talk about how, how would be a good policy procedure for uh, the next uh, semester to work on Bitbucket and branches, forks, and repositories, per se. Uh, the way we did it for this class was that we created one main uh, repo which we called F4PWA. This is for the web application. And then from that web uh, web application repository, we created one fork for each team. So we created one fork for the EFPT, for the EFWA, for EFWE, and this was for testing, just uh, to show the process of how to create a fork on my previous video. So, <clears throat> And what happened? So for each for this fork, we just created one branch, one feature branch, one release branch, one master branch, and then one specific and specific branches for um, user stories, and then another uh, specific feature branch for each of the team members. This would have worked if we would have just had one team to work on this repository. Since we had many teams and it's really difficult to manage and organize things with many different people on different on many different schedules, uh, it was really uh, chaotic, uh, difficult and time consuming merging all this code for just a simple publishing on the server. So <clears throat> what should we do in the future? In the future, we're, we should do this. We're going to have one repository for that web application, let's say. We're going to keep creating, having master release production or feature development and release development. It really doesn't matter how many branches you want to have here, but you know, <clears throat> the usual is that we have these four: master, release production, release development. It's not necessary, and feature development. So, for the future, we should just leave master, release production. That's it. <clears throat> and then uh, release development could be something or either one of these. We don't need both. So what we're gonna do is we're going to have these branches and only those branches for the main repo. And we are going to keep having one fork coming from that main branch or repository, sorry, for each of the teams, right? So when we go inside, what are we going to do? <clears throat> from master, this is where it's going to, <clears throat> it has to be different. From the master, we're going to assume that yes, we're just going to have master, release production, and either feature development or release development, or development, doesn't matter. But we're just going to have three branches. And what we're going to do, we're also going to create forks for each team member. So my name is Gianfranco, and I'm going to create a fork for myself. And we're going <clears> to <throat> disable or, sorry, keep enable, enable fork syncing. And I'm going to go back to FRPWA. And I'm going to see the fork, my fork. So I'm going to create one for each software uh, team member. So what's going to happen? Each team member is going to have, should have its own fork to work independently. Each developer is going to have their own fork and each developer is going to have their own master branch, their own release production branch, their own release development branch or feature development branch. And then they're going to be able to create 
branches for each of the user stories that they're going to be working. That way, they can specifically tie a whole branch to a specific user story, not just commits, kind of like how we did for this semester. That way, each individual team member is going to have their own repo. Let's say like that, it's gonna, they're going to have their own repository for themselves to work and to organize themselves the way they want. So we're going to have a team leader or uh, an admin, a, a branch administrator that is going to be in charge of working on the root branch, which is going to be the team's fork. And they're going to be able to kind of pull the information, get everything from a specific branch of the team member's fork. That way, we're going to keep everything more organized in forks. And then we're going to only going to be branching from our own fork. So I'm only going to be creating branches and working with branches in my fork for a project. Other team members are going to be working with, are going to be branching on their, in their own fork project. That way it's going to be way, way easier to do merging and um, getting everything together, all the team, different team members from all the different teams work together to be published in a simpler way. We can even publish different versions for each of the group in the server to be demoed on a different uh, time or at a different moment or for different features while the main master branch administrator is pulling everything together for just a main release uh, version of the, of, the, of the application published in the server. <clears throat> For the database, it's going to be a little bit more difficult because we cannot have many copies of the database project or of, of a database in SQL. So for the database, we should keep working the way we did. We just have a, a couple of people uh, working, adding stuff to the database, and the same thing goes for the web API calls. So that's going to be pretty kind of more difficult to manage, but we didn't have any we didn't have much problems with the database because the amount of changes done to the database are way, way less than the amount of changes that we do on, uh, on a Visual Studio project. Thank you.